So I know that you, when you started out, you were doing uh, like bouncer at a nightclub. Yeah. And um, sorry, the internet's kind of like going in and out, so hopefully this doesn't go to crap again. Um, and what else? All right, good. Um, so you were doing this, you were kind of doing it like I'm doing it purposely, which was on the side. Am I correct? Yes. All right. And how long, like, was it before you got, like, your first paid client right after you started the training? Uh, that was within, like, three weeks, I want to say. Three to four weeks. And, uh, if I'm allowed to ask, or if you're comfortable saying, uh, what was like the just general type of company? Was it like a jeweler, a certain like brand store or something? When I first started, I, I obviously reached out to people who I knew more or less, and um, I worked with a personal trainer, and I was also working with a company that I know who manufactures uh, steel roofs, and those were my first my first two clients. So you went to people you know. Okay, that makes sense. Because. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but like I know I, I've commented a lot on Ryan's channel. I've commented a little bit on your channel, and because a lot of people have been saying, you know, I see them asking you and Ryan, like, you know, what if we don't have an LLC, or you know, what if we don't have this or that? And it's funny because, um, you know, this is technically my third official. Like, I've created a lot of businesses. Most of them just I haven't been passionate about, so I don't go through with it. So this is like technically yeah. like my third official business, and. Like, I understood the concept of why we need an LLC, and I understand why people feel like they need business cards. But as I've said in the comments, and I'll say in this video, like, you really only just need the knowledge and the confidence in yourself to just go do it. And just like you, you know, you went to, you went to people you knew. And so what I did was recently I thought, well, I audited this bar and pub right by uh, Notre Dame, because I'm around the Notre Dame, Indiana area. And there's this place that's really, really popular, and I audited them, and they had a decent following, but, like, looking at my entertainment business, because I run a hypnosis and illusionist business, I barely do any, like, advertising, social media, stuff that you guys teach for my own business, but I was at, like, a quarter of the number of followers and likes that they were at. And they were yeah. well-established years before me, so I told them, I was like, hey, look, I got an entertainment business, I'm local too, but, you know, I'm right behind you, in a sense, I'm like this is what you could be doing instead. And I found out they're using Yelp, which is how I found them to begin with. And I said, you know, we come, me and my friend come here every year to drink for your drink specials. And I would like to generate you more business. So, and I think the one thing I want to point out to people is when I went there, I went there with the intention of doing that. And like you, I went to people I knew and businesses I knew. And I have, and still have, no business cards, no LLC. And I think I was just, emailed to my business email a few weeks ago that I didn't confirm like the URL that I bought. So I still have it, but they won't let me transfer it to like the free website hosting thing I made. So I don't even, I have like nothing except a Facebook page and a YouTube page, which no one, none of the customers even asked for. <laughs> yeah, that's something people get a huge misconception of. They think that, I mean, obviously I, I'm never going to tell someone don't get an LLC just because for legal reasons, I'm just saying, you, you, you technically, uh, when it comes to tax, I think that's your own thing. But uh, when it comes to the people looking back to see if you have all those things, all those things like a website, business card, all those, a lot of times they're not going to. A lot of the times, at least from what I've dealt with, people haven't even looked back. They haven't checked. They're like, no, I'm, like if you say that you are where you are, then you're gonna you're gonna do it. Like yes, some people may want proof that that can happen, but at the end of the day, a lot of the people aren't going to want to. So if you feel like you want to get started, you just need to like like if you're don't have the money, you need to have an LLC, you don't have the money for all these things, so just start, try and start going out there, at least try and, at least start talking to people about it, it's going to help you out, at least when you do have money, to, to really start efficiently. Yeah, and two things I want to kind of touch on there is, uh, one, just go out and do it, um, I think I mentioned this in one of my first videos on my YouTube channel, which was, I used to do, a, I used to have a driving position with Jimmy John's downtown where I lived, and before I left there to run my company, entertainment company full-time, I remember talking to one of the managers and they said, we take people the most seriously who don't just call in every other day because their mom or dad told them to, but they're physically coming in saying, what do you have open? When can I apply? Let's go ASAP type thing. They take those people the most seriously. So you can do email and calling. I actually just got a confirmation for a meeting next week when I get back after my show this weekend for um, 
a uh, winery in northern Indiana, which was pretty cool. And these people originally, like a month ago, I thought I lost them because they're like, yeah, we don't we don't normally pay our people that much. We already have someone who's doing this. And I just literally emailed them. This is a good tip for everyone else. I emailed them and I said, hey, I checked you out. It's been like two and a half weeks and I see that you're still doing pretty well, but your likes and followings haven't gone up. And that means your audience for attention is okay, but it could be increased easily. And you yeah. could have bigger sales still. And you have a good reaction to this event you're doing, but because of the lack of likes that you don't have, this could also be improved. And eventually the guy emailed me back like, I think like four or five days ago, and he said, honestly, I just saw this, and I guess I would be dumb not to at least ask what the free trial is. And now yeah. I'm getting him hooked on the free trial. And this guy is like, I don't even know how old. He's an old guy, so he's like one of those stuck in his time stuck in his ways type of person and now he's just like you could try the free trial i'm like yes <laughs> and um and i'm also i also got that pub that i was talking about i got them on that too and here's the thing here's how i approach it because a lot of people ask me this on your channel ryan's channel i literally just went in and we were, we were drinking for like a half hour and then i looked at the waiter and i said hey is your manager here can i speak with him and he goes yeah and i go by the way really quick this has nothing to do with your service we're super happy with you we're not mad at you this is not about you he goes Oh, okay. <laughs> and he goes and gets the manager for me. And thankfully, the manager was pretty young. And I said, hey, I'm John from Scale Your Media, local social marketing agency. And I just want to say thank you. We've been coming here for years. Every summer, we come here for your Friday night drink specials. We obviously like your service. Otherwise, we wouldn't come here. And we care about your business. And that being said, like I said, I was from a social marketing agency. And I recently did a free audit because I care. Like I said, I care about your company. And I found a few things that I named. I was like, you know, I see you're doing Yelp and you're probably wasting money there because, you know, we could do more for you for, um, you know, this kind of money. And one really quick tip. I'm not sure if anyone's researched this. I Googled it and I think they said like an average for like, I think it's like the whole service. It's like $600 per thousand impressions for Yelp. And I told them that. I was like, you know, if you're looking for getting a lot of impressions and likes and follows, we can easily do that, but if you're doing it through, you know, Yelp, they're basically charging you. I think Google even said it was like over a thousand percent what other sources can do. It's like you could either pay six hundred dollars for an impression, or you know, for how much we charge, you could easily get triple to quadruple that in a month, and you could get extra follows, and you could get extra revenue, and this, that, and the other thing. And that's how I landed him a meeting. And he did, mind you, he did ask me for a business card. I said do you have a Facebook? And because here's my thing, and I said this in a recent video, people are like, well, what do you do if you don't have a Facebook? Or what if you do, what do you do if you don't have a business card? And I do the same thing that what I do with my hypnosis company. I go, I'm a social media hypnotist. I'm one of the very few that does a lot of my stuff on social media to engage people because people are always on their phone. And I believe if we're doing social media marketing, to some good extent, that should be our connection. Yeah. And so they're like, what's your business card? And I'll take out, my, I'll take out their phone, have them go to Facebook, like it, we message through there. That way, you don't need that. And uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna be like, you know, the guys don't do it because obviously people still ask for it, like they ask me for it. But I, and I think this kind of comes from the psychological training that I have with my other company. Is I like making people kind of rewire their thinking and review things from a different perception, and be like, hey, this is about social media marketing. Follow me, and because like, and I set it up so that way on my Facebook, like every to every other day is a new free tip for businesses like one one night it was um it was uh if you are like one big tip i have for you guys is you know do local competitor research and that's basically all i put and then i put a picture for friday night of like some girls drinking at a club having fun smiling at the camera and i said if you don't have a friday night special your competitor does and I just do it like that. So that way when they see it, they're like, okay, he does post like he said he would do for us. And it just makes that connection. Um, I totally forgot what the second point was because I went so in depth with that. But the point is you can go and you can close these uh, initial meetings to go over the audit. Or you can you can close a deal for a free week trial, free two week trial without having to have any of that. Now, obviously, like Hayden and Ryan say, and I plan to do this soon because I'm actually going to uh, probably end up giving my company to someone else in the future because I have other plans, um, is that you probably want the LLC. Get all that stuff so at least when I do end up handing it off to someone else that's more passionate about it than me, they'll have all that set for them. And that's the main thing I want to say and bring... Oh yeah, that was the second point is you start this as a side job. Your main thing was the club and bouncer. 
Now, a lot of people on YouTube are looking at me like, dude, why are you still doing that? And I always like comment on like every other person who says it, like, why is he doing this if he's making all this money? And I'm just like, because he likes it. Like, <laughs> like, I, like, I'm not anywhere, like, when I was, uh, when I was a young teenager, I wanted to be the white David Blaine when I grew up. And, like, you know, I was like, magic, like, I'm going to become a professional magician. And then I went to Vegas, I learned hypnosis, and I was like, I want to be a professional hypnotist. So, people are like, why do you still do magic if you say you supposedly don't love it anymore? It's like, I still like it, and it's easy to do, and I know how to do it. But I still like it, and you still like bouncing, and honestly, to be... This is something that a lot of people in my life, at least in my immediate circles, would laugh at. Because um, even though I like, I you know, I go to the gym and I do martial arts and anything, I used to want to be a bouncer. Hey, I will tell you, it's a damn good skill. And everyone's like, "Dude, you're so small." I'm like, "Shut up!" <laughs> like that has nothing to do with. It. Oh, correction, I shouldn't say that has nothing to do with. It. As a bouncer, does my size really dictate how good I am at a job like that? No. <laughs> It's more of how you're going to, if somebody, I, somebody who's small can have a much higher voice. We had a, a female uh, bouncer there who she could, she could handle guys way better than any of the guys could. Because she'd come up there and she'd get like, five foot tall, five foot two, I think she actually was. Well, just another like five foot two. She would count six foot seven guys, she didn't care. What? That's cool. Yeah. It is, it's all about mindset. And I just want to get people to realize that. You know, th th there's going to be a different situation for a lot of people. Because a lot of people have commented on your channel or Ryan's channel or whatever that they've literally quit their job to do this full time. Now, obviously, if you're passionate about it, it's easy to do that. Kind of like I'm passionate about my hypnosis and magic, so I do that full time. Um, but it's it can be done, again, um, just based on my experience. Again, I, I plan to get these things, but it can be done without business cards. It can be done without a website. It can be done without LLC. And it can still be done part time. And making that money like I'm in the process now of closing hopefully at least my first um, 997 client with a winery and if I'm lucky I'll get the uh, pub on my side too so that'll be two clients at this very basic package which would be cool even if I only get one like thinking conservatively even if I only get one I want everyone to understand that each of those meetings was no longer than like 20 or 30 minutes yeah. and I just did like a follow-up email and then I just let it go. I worked on my John Wayne's entertainment business, and a month later, this winery, who was the first person I talked to, who said they weren't interested, now they're interested. Follow up with an email. You can still do it part-time, and you can still get those results, but you have to be consistent. And yeah, I've been denied by a good number of businesses, both email, just not answering me, or I go into business, and like, that's way too much money, and they don't really let you kind of get into it or whatnot. And, um, is that a dog? That was, that was a dog coming downstairs. Oh, I love dogs, so that made me happy. <laughs> um, what was, uh, sorry. Oh, there we go. Um, what? Oh, you just cut up there. Okay. Um, how many rejections, just so everyone knows, because I'm not sure if you put this on your channel or not, how many rejections did you go through until you got your first yes? Right. And um, so, like, how long, like, day, or was it, like, a few days or a week or two before you got your first client? Yeah, it was about, it, it was about, um, only that, no, it was the first day that I went out, that I got um, a client. Yeah, the first day that I went out, like, door-to-door door that I got an actual client, but that obviously didn't follow up the level and later that it happened, but it was the first day that I went out that I connected with somebody who ended up being a client. Good. And um, and so now, how many clients do you have right now? Uh, seven. Okay. And you're still bouncing. I am still bouncing. I am still. <laughs> I'm actually to be honest. Um, my um, this weekend will be my last weekend. Actually, it's gone to the point where it's just been too much. Um, unfortunately, like when you put on that, you're usually up early in the morning on weekdays just to get things done. And then weekends come around, you're up till three, four a.m. Bouncing, it takes a big pull on you to take some beauty and get back into the rhythm. So I decided that it's just 
And you're you're obviously okay with that decision to kind of go from the bouncing just to full time SMMA. Man, that's crazy. And and really, just really quick, because I've had I've I've tried to answer this for other people too. And I think some people, I'm I'm not sure what the deal is, whether or not they like just try to poke questions at you and hoping that you'll give a bunch of information from your course away for free, or if maybe they watched or they bought your course but didn't listen to everything because they just got so excited. Um, I hear a lot of people like, you know, how do we get these things done? You know, especially once you get a lot of businesses. Um, and again, I'm trying to do this interview just to get people who still have another thing they want to do and they're still able to run this. I plan to only run maybe or control, manage myself, maybe only one or two businesses. Overall, I'd like to get like up to 10 or 12, um, but I'm going to have other people manage that for me. And a lot of people get, you know, what do you pay? And my idea is like, I have two contracts. I have a contract for recruiters and a contract for managers. And a contract for recruiters basically says you only get paid to go out and recruit. So you'll get like, let's say it's a basic package. You get $500 for recruiting successfully and then a $100 retainer every month that they stay with us. And with managers, yeah. let's say they get a basic package. It's $500 for recruiting the business successfully and $500 a month that they stay on board and you manage them. Would you say that's a pretty good deal? And I think that's that's a cool thing too because it allows us to still run our company, especially because I'm trying to get more managers on board. Just because again, um, I'm at a point now with my entertainment company where I'm about to literally go almost nationwide, and yeah. it's neat. But I know that between now and like October, when my big um, national show is, that between now and then I got to get more managers, and I'm gonna have to have more people managing like all these different companies that could actually use it. Meanwhile. You know, I might even eventually have to pay someone to manage the two that I want to manage just because I got to go out on the road. But um, so for anyone who might be in my position that wanted, you know, has more than one thing going on, get a manager contract. Um, and I guess, you know, if someone wants it, they can hit me up. Uh, unless also, Hayden, do you, do you have a manager's contract or like how do you run it exactly? Yeah, that's basically what I. That's basically what I did for both of mine. Um, I just kind of copied the form I used for my entertainment one. Uh, so if anyone is ever interested in that and wants to talk to me more about that, let me know, and I'd be happy to try to connect you with my business email and send you that if you want to do that. Like Hayden said, fifty percent, you know, even ten percent just for a retainer for being a recruiter isn't bad. And and I think that one thing, one thing that only one regret I have about your program and in investing in it, and this it sounds bad until I give you the reason is I regret purchasing it when I did, which I think was May, because college students were leaving town. Uh, and I didn't think about it until after the course. I was like, oh, I know all this stuff. I was like, I'm going to get people. And I was just like, everyone's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but um, because people are like, you know, where do we go? And someone, someone uh, thought it was odd that they go, hey, John, what site do you go to to find these people who are going to recruit? And I said, why you like i understand again you uh, using social media that would help since we're a social media agency but why not go to a college student who knows that they need money and they're actually in the field and getting a degree in that and just being like hey i have a position for you if you're truly passionate about this and it can start asap yeah. and have did you do anything like that or how did you go about recruiting people
So how many uh, people do you have on board right now helping you, if any? Uh, when it comes to no more recruiters, see, I've gotten to the point where I've been working a lot on personal branding, mm -hmm. not so much on the social media marketing. I use social media marketing for everything, but building my personal brand is a uh, long-term goal, more uh, rewarding for me. So uh, no recruiters with me right now. I do have a couple people who do like my editing for me, who do um, content creation for me, um, some copyright. So I've got like four people who I generally work with. Good. And... Uh... Is it expensive? How do you pay them exactly? Because I know some people ask that too. Yeah, no, it, it's not that bad. It depends where you get it from. I mean, like my, my editor does like my YouTube channel and my, my YouTube videos and some videos um, I enjoy editing for some stuff I edit myself, but who do, he does some of my YouTube videos for my clients. And uh, he, you know, he's from the U.S., so he's a little bit more expensive than maybe somebody who was from wherever, you know, he gets people from all over the world to edit your stuff. But at the end of the day, I just, uh, he's a really good editor. I resonate with him really well. So uh, I normally pay through PayPal most of the time. That's just my way of doing things. I keep track of everything through PayPal. So that's where I get paid for when there's course sales or anything. I generally get paid through PayPal. So I pay other people out there. there. Um, when it comes to like editing a video, I mean, you can spend, you can spend, get, get somebody on, on Upwork, $3 to edit through like a, a half hour video and cut it down in two minutes and do some cool edits. Like, it's not very expensive to outsource at all. I think it's a matter of using, like, Fiverr and Upwork. You can get the work done for way less money and way less time um, and have a lot more time to yourself if you're going to utilize that. So to answer your question, it's not very expensive. Number-wise, I couldn't give it to you exactly, like, how much everything costs, but yeah. it's just it's, it's not very expensive if you, if you outsource correctly. Yeah, you just got to do your research when you use uh, places like Fiverr, because I know I've used sources like that for my own company, and... Um, you definitely want to make sure that uh, there's a good amount of information on them and stuff. Oh, yeah. Read the reviews. There should be a ton of reviews. Look for somebody who's been on there for a while and got a bunch of reviews. It won't be that bad then. And now, one thing that um, I always think about, and I just figured out how to do this for my other company, um, and I'm still trying to kind of manage things with the uh, scale your media because I'm not the biggest fan of certain things like Google+, Plus. honestly, don't care about, and as far as I'm concerned with all the marketing training I've taken, no one really takes it seriously. So I pretty much avoid that platform overall. There's only one business I've audited that's used Pinterest. Otherwise, we just jump on Instagram because listening to Gary V myself, Instagram is definitely kicking it up a notch and they're becoming way more relevant every day. Um, how would you personally uh, use social media, the different platforms, to tell different sides of the story? So for example, like uh, for my Skill Your Media YouTube page, I put out videos that are helpful for people wanting to learn how to help other people. And then for my Skill Your Media Facebook page, um, I'm not sure if I just said that twice or not. I don't know. Um, <laughs> YouTube is for helping people like your students who want to learn how to do it for other people. And then my Facebook page is tips for actual businesses themselves. Yeah. How, how do you do it? Oh, sorry, you cut out, you cut out the actual question right there. Oh, sorry. Uh, so how do you, how would you run the different uh, platforms as far as content? Honestly, when it comes to content, if, you, if you're, there's not a huge difference now between Facebook and Instagram whatsoever because they're getting to the point where they're, they're fairly similar in the sense of if you're going to post a picture, you can post on Facebook, you can post it on Instagram as well. If you're going to post a video, you can post it on Instagram as long as it's a, under a minute long or whatever. It's, it's a more than a minute now, whatever it is. And besides, you can swipe over now, right? You can post a five-minute video if you just keep swiping to the next one, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, that Instagram allows you to post several things. So uh, it happens different in a lot between those two. Um, one thing I, I would say about Facebook is that it has a lot more shareability in the sense that things can go viral much easier on Facebook because people can share it um, a lot easier than they can. Like it's, I mean, a page can't really, per se, go. It can go viral on Instagram, but it's much easier to do on Facebook, I find. Um, but if you're doing content, no matter what, your content should stay consistent. I mean, if you have a business page on Facebook, it's going to be the same on Instagram. You're going to be posting the same content. That might be slightly different on Facebook and slightly different on Instagram because it um, be a friendly for each platform, but at the end of the day, they're going to be the content itself, yeah. the core content, which should be the same. Yeah, and I think that's basically what I tell my clients is like, for example, 
for the basic package we do the whole in i i describe the youtube video as a 30 to 60 second intro video where we film in and outside the venue both day and night and then we just throw something together and i do all my video editing so i would do that for them and then we would use a lot of cross promotion like we'd throw that onto uh, you know a link on the twitter we throw a little snippet of it onto instagram and then we would advertise it as a picture and tell people on um, Facebook to either go see it on their YouTube or if Facebook is one of their main things, which for most businesses it is, post it on the top of their Facebook and then pin it there. So every time someone comes there, whether or not they're new, they can see kind of yeah. what's up to date. Yeah. So lots of cross promotion. And I think you're right because Facebook, I believe Facebook bought Instagram. So basically they're yeah. being managed the same now. So I, I suppose that um, kind of, and I've already seen this done is, you know, take a picture on Instagram or take a quick video, have a little description, and then just cross promote on like Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. I think people just kind of overthink things sometimes. They're just like, oh no, every platform's got to have like the idea of what you're advertising for that day, but in a completely different way. <laughs> yeah, they've gone to the point now where they're they're all the same. I mean, like obviously Instagram story. And the best part is, you can take one piece of content, you can take a picture or a video. You take a video, and you could then break it down for Instagram, put a bit on it there. The full thing's on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, a snippet of it is on the Instagram or it's on the Snapchat story or on the Instagram story. Like it can be broken down into twenty different ways. You only need one piece of content, but like I said, it's just then divided into the different ones. However, it is that they fit. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I think that's mostly what I remember. Most of what I remember and most of what I had talked about. Um, big question, I guess, because I think a lot of people would probably enjoy this question. What's been your biggest client up to date? Biggest client was a client I worked with who did uh, bath bombs, and they were huge money wise um, for me, and also huge success on their end because it's such a viral thing. Like they're so easy to sell okay. that it just it was just except it was a ton of success on both ends. I've never heard of bath bombs. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You've never heard of a bath bomb. It's the things that you'll see. Uh, um, what people call white chicks use where they drop it in the water and it like fizzes up, you know, in the bath. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I know, but I can, like, I'm imagining it. I can see it in my head, but I, I just like, one, I just like the fact that like it's a popular thing, and two, you just opened it up with white chicks. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, white chicks just drop it and it gets fuzzy and fizzy. I'm just like, okay, that sounds normal. Well, you know, that's the, probably the best way to, to explain it to somebody. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> so is that like one of the bigger paying clients then, obviously, too? Yeah, they, they were definitely the, the highest paying client by quite a bit. So um, I know when we first or when we when I took the course um, at the time, at some point, I think Ryan said that he had yet to get uh, what I think I consider in my packages to be the diamond, which is like the four nine nine seven package. Um, have either and or both of you at this point have at least one client at that level? Yeah, that was, that was, for me, that would be my client. Okay, that's cool. And, oh yeah, one more thing I, I uh, remember is someone was wondering, like, based on the package, and I think you guys go over this a little bit in the course, but I think specificity would help, which is what is the amount um, that you would post depending on, you know, what package they choose. For example, like, the basic package, maybe like one simple post every other day, and like a package up from that is like um, two posts every other day. Like, how would you do that? My minimal package is still at least a post a day, no matter what. And um, it can go up from there, but no matter what, I think that you would, if you're going to be doing this, you need to be posting once a day. It doesn't, it's not hard to get 30 days worth of content put together, 30 pictures, 30 videos, whatever it may be. It's, it's not that hard. And so would you say, therefore, that the majority of all your content is pictures and videos every day? Yeah. Okay, because I know some people are just like, I don't know if I should put a picture or if I could just put text up there. And I find that, um, at least for my other company, I was doing a lot of just text like, hey, this is an update. Or, hey, you know, check this out or whatever. But the first time about a year ago that I put a picture up from my show and then I said, you know, congratulations to this graduating class or whatever, it got a huge amount of traction. And yeah, no, pictures, pictures and videos are going to do way better than text all day long, and especially videos now are, are, are killing it. So do you have any, because uh, we're about 31 minutes into it now, do you have any uh, last-minute tips as far as someone who's just doing this on the side and um, 
anything that maybe you've experienced that you think would be helpful for them? I think that surround yourself, if you're going to be doing this, the how I learned and how I learned quickly was surround yourself with it. If you're in the car, a lot of people say, I don't have time to learn, I don't want to sit there, whatever. If you're in the car, you've got time to listen to an ebook or a podcast on social media marketing. You've got time to listen to Gary V or whoever it may be, whoever you enjoy listening to. Like you've got, you've got the time to sit there and listen to them. If you're in the gym and doing whatever, that, like there's so much time in the day that you have time to learn. And if you're not spending the time to learn and actually take it seriously, then you're not going to end up, you know, succeeding quickly at least, at, or at the pace that, that I did because I surround myself with it. I knew when I walked into a business exactly what I was going to say. Um, another thing would be don't focus on what your background is in the sense of like. Just go out there and spend the majority of your time learning, and then the other half of that time going out and trying to get clients. And by the end of it, if you're constantly learning each day, then you're going to each day you go try and get clients, your pitch is going to get better and better and better as you go on. So that would be my, my tips when it comes to, to social media marketing. I'd have to agree um, for two reasons. One, um, and I was telling this to one of the organizers at the fair I'm performing for tomorrow, a lot of what I've done professionally business-wise for my company that people like um, value-wise from what I give is from something that, um, to put it in nice terms for YouTube young audiences, that I messed up. I like messed up something yeah. and then I, fe- I, I learned from it or I completely went off script. It wasn't what it was supposed to be, but it ends up turning out better. So either way, I learned from it and then you're able to implement that into your next thing. And um, exactly. I think that's honestly legitimately where some of my best stuff has literally come from. I like get an idea and I throw that in just like spontaneously and then they love it. And then, you know, I have my like, colleagues or like my interns like, no, you, you didn't script that. I'm just like, no, but we're using it now. And it's just like it comes. It's I love like yeah. those are like some of my favorite moments ever. One last thing I have for you. Is there any type of. Trick that you can do on a Skype call. Uh, are we talking like magic trick or like hypnosis? Hypnosis. Uh, yeah, I actually uh, a few months ago I was doing um weekly hypnosis sessions for a lot of people out in Europe. They were paying me on a weekly basis to hypnotize them for fun and relaxation. Huh. And uh, if you Perfect. want, I can hypnotize you for relaxation. There's the thing, there's the thing, that's like what everyone says, but here's the thing. Uh, have you ever meditated before? No, not really, no. But you understand the basic concept of it. Yeah. So, I always tell people, like people, especially women, because I, like I said, I came back from the fair to do this interview with you, and every time I mentioned hypnosis, I only had one guy do this, but a lot of girls go, you know, oh, don't look in my eyes, don't, don't get in my head, I don't want to know what's in there, or you don't want to know what's in there. I'm like, girl, I don't care about your life like that, but... Um, it's interesting because really all I am is a mental guide. I don't actually like it's yeah. not it's not like you're, inception. You're yeah, uh, I, I, know, I, know I just like do this, do this, like because the majority of all like hypnosis in and of itself. Like I tell my students who actually pay for training, hypnosis is just mental physical relaxation. What people are used to is hypnotic phenomena, which is the phenomena of reacting to a command I give you under hypnosis. So, like, when you see, so, like, I hate this routine, but I say it because everyone understands it because of Hollywood, uh, which is, you know, when you see people starting to act like chickens on stage, that's because yeah. it's the similar, it's similar to, like, when adults like you and I, if we get really, really drunk, we know what's going on, we don't care anymore. Uh, okay. And we're just like, chicken? Yeah, that sounds great. Why? Because I'm drunk. <laughs> And then they're acting like a chicken. So my job is just to get them to that state. Um, obviously, I don't get them drunk. I can make, I can, I can, I was about to say synthesize. I can simulate a drunk or high experience with hypnosis, and I've done it successfully to people who have both smoked and drank and not smoked and drank, which is very interesting. Um, and it's also one of the biggest things that I don't think people are aware of is people are super skeptical about it. But here's two things. One, I always say now, why is it so hard to believe that the most powerful tool on this earth that created everything that you see that isn't nature has the ability to help you. Yeah. And two, most people don't realize that hypnotherapy in the past five years alone has boomed 
and is now one of the most go one of the most referred to and revered go to techniques to get over almost anything. Like one of the first times I moved into my own house, I had a roommate who was in the Air Force, and he said, "How are you going to pay for rent?" I went up to him, and in five minutes, I completely alleviated his PTSD for that entire night. And wow. he said, "I feel better in the past five minutes than I felt in the past five months." Wow. And you know, weight loss, smoking, PTSD, ADD, ADHD. Um, me and my mom joke. I think we we think uh, I might have ADHD, which is part of the reason I I like um, sporadically bought your program because in my mind I was like, okay, I got this entertainment thing, but high school season is coming to an end. It's summer. I need more money, and I trust Hayden and Ryan, and it looks pretty easy. And in theory, it is. But you have to. By the way, this is a huge tip. You have to implement people. Yeah. There's a the whole thing of um, what was it? I think the more you uh, uh, Ty Lopez, the more you learn, the more you earn. One of my old managers tweaked it and said, the more you implement, the more you learn. Very true. If you get Hayden and Ryan's program, you will learn things. You have all the potential to literally make thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars, if you implement. Very true. But that being said, I'm going to leave the hypnosis for another time. I'm going to do that with you privately sometime. They don't get to see that. <laughs> Plus, I don't want to embarrass you making you look like a chicken. <laughs>